Porsche just announced their newest Nürburgring lap record, a 7 minute 7 second lap in a pre-series Porsche Taycan. Not only is this lap a full 26 seconds faster than the lap set in a current production Taycan only a year prior, it also bested the Tesla Model S Plaid by a full 17 seconds and came just shy of the Rimac Nevera lap record for an EV by 2 seconds. The news sparked rumors of a 1000 plus horsepower tri-motor monster being the key to the success. But I think just with the short clips provided, we can see that this isn't a 1000 horsepower car and actually Porsche did something very spectacular here. I also think the huge reduction in lap time can also be explained for the same reasons that EVs are not very realistic in racing sims. So let's look at the data, simulate a lap, and possibly determine if we're moving on to the next chapter in EV performance. In the teaser video provided by Porsche, there are several clips that show the lap time counter, the speed, and obviously where the car is on track. With these, we can essentially determine sector times and track the car's progress through the lap, and then compare that with the other EV records. We can also see in some of the clips a countdown timer, which is new, and this is most likely representing the overboost time left at full throttle so the driver knows when the power is going to be reduced. If we start comparing this to the Rimac lap, we can see that heading into Foxhole, the Taycan is already about one and a half seconds behind the Rimac at the start of the lap. The next clip we see is in the carousel and now the gap has came down to three quarters of a second, but still behind. Yet, heading into the Stefan Beloff S, the Taycan is actually ahead almost 0.8 seconds at this point. So through the tightest section of the track, it gained over one and a half seconds on the Rimac. But still, to fall two seconds behind by the end of the lap, more time must be gained in these final corners to overcome the massive straightaway difference. Here we have the Tesla Model S Plaid versus the Rimac synced together heading on to the Dunninger Ho, and you can see that the Tesla loses four seconds just on the straightaway due to the huge difference in speed. So I think the Taycan is about two seconds ahead before the final straightaway, then loses about four seconds in the last sector of the lap. I think the only thing left to do now is simulate a full lap. And if we make sure the sector times are in alignment with each other, I think we'll have a reasonable representation of what this lap will look like when Porsche releases it in a couple months. So let's jump into Gran Turismo and upgrade a Taycan to match this performance. As I mentioned briefly at the beginning of the video, the Taycan in-game is not very accurate to the lap times produced by the real-world car. The completely stock car in game, I can easily run a 725 lap, which would put it more on pace with the Tesla Model S Plaid. But if we look at the Turbo S lap from 2022, we see long periods of lift and coast and off throttle or part throttle. And I'm assuming this is due to mainly thermal management of the battery, which of course isn't an issue in the game. In the game, you can use the battery to its full capability 100% of the time until it's depleted. In the real world, as a battery depletes, its resistance increases, which means there is more heat per the same power level as the battery gets lower on charge. Managing this heat in the battery seemed to be an issue with the first generation of the Taycan, and I think this is something that Porsche sought to address. So instead of just adding more power, I believe the new Taycan Porsche has developed simply uses the power it already has more efficiently. So I won't be surprised if this car is actually only around 800 horsepower with only two motors and still weighing 5,000 pounds. Gran Turismo is actually the perfect place to test the ideal situation for an EV with zero overheating and maximum energy deployment throughout a whole lap. 
This may be the rare exception where the real world is actually catching up with the performance of the car in the sim versus the other way around. Without further ado, here's the car we'll be driving. 2019 Taycan Turbo S with a small power increase to put it close to 800 horsepower. It also has a new front air dam and rear wing to increase the aerodynamics of the car and improve its downforce. It's running on sport medium tires in the stock brakes. The suspension has been upgraded to handle the extra downforce from the rear wing and it weighs in just over 5,000 pounds, so it still takes a lot to maneuver this car around the Nordschleifer. So after a lot of testing and many laps, I came up with this lap that seemed to match up quite well. I had similar speed and pace heading into Foxhole at exactly the same moment as the clip shows in the teaser video. Next up, when we come to the carousel, again, I'm almost in the exact same position in the carousel at the same time as shown in the video. And then here, there is a bit of variance where I'm a few tenths ahead going into the Stefan Beloff S. But since I can't adjust the gearing in game, the car is limited to 163 kilometers per hour. So even though I was slightly ahead, the lap still ends up a little bit behind at the finish line. And this is when I realized the in-game timer actually records a lap about a quarter second faster than what I was reading off of a secondary timer. Porsche says they'll release the full video in March in its entirety. And when they do, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison to see how close I actually got to what the real world lap looks like. But I'll give you my predictions now. I think the car will not have a thousand horsepower. I think it'll be around 800, maybe 850. I also think it will probably still be a two motor car, but with a new rear torque vectoring differential like they are starting to produce in the Macan EV. I think it will still weigh over 5,000 pounds and it will probably only have a top speed on the Dottinger Ho of around 270 to 280 kilometers per hour. I think most of the lap time actually came from Porsche improving the handling and stability and aerodynamics of the car while also improving the thermal efficiency of the battery so that it could deploy all its power over an entire lap. I think the goal with this car was to develop something that Lars Kern, the test driver, could push for a full lap without restricting himself due to some technical limitation. And I think that's exactly what they achieved. So now I'll leave you with my full sim lap compared to the Rimac Nevera record lap. So you can actually see how crazy this lap will probably be when it comes out in March.
Although many people might call EVs boring, I think it's interesting how quickly these lap times have changed over the past couple of years. Let me know in the comments what you think of the EV performance wars. Is it boring, exciting, interesting, or something else? That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.